So as the mowing season continues, it's getting harder to find free mowers to fix and flip, which leads me to plan B, which is to buy the most complete and cheapest mowers I can find to fix instead. Now the worst part is when the seller tells you that it runs, but come on, can you really believe what a stranger tells you online? Well, I guess we're going to find out just how honest the seller was about this one, and hopefully I didn't just buy someone's broken lawnmower. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Yard Machine's lawnmower, and the problem is I just bought it from a seller by using an app on my phone, and they told me that it runs. Now, to be honest, I really couldn't argue with the price, but I did have to drive about 20 minutes one way to pick it up, so hopefully it'll be worth it. Now, I'm going to try and repair this lawnmower, but yours might be different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. I do want to at least take a good look around just to make sure that it doesn't have a hole in the block, oil leaking from a gasket, or the fuel line is missing for some strange reason. I know it sounds like I'm being overly cautious, but remember, someone who's not familiar with small engines just sold this to me. So yes, I'm being a bit cautious until I'm okay with it. And it doesn't take me very long to find our first issue, which looks like someone's effort to work on it. Now the screw you're looking at helps to hold the fuel bowl onto the carb and does not have a tendency to back out like this. That means it was taken out and then put back on by hand and it would seem like someone forgot to tighten it. Now, I'm not worried about a fuel leak just yet and that's because just so long as the other screw is in place, the bowl will stay in place and keep fuel from leaking out. Now, surprisingly, the oil looks to be pretty fresh, which doesn't happen all too often, but the bigger question is how much oil is in the engine? And even though it's not full, it is above the low mark, which means there's enough oil in the engine for a test start. And as expected, despite what the seller had to say, this engine did not start, at least not on its own. So I'm going to prime the engine with fuel and see if we get a different result. Now the good news is that the engine did start and run, but the bad news is that it stopped on its own, meaning we have a problem with something in the fuel system. Also, after taking a look under the mower reveals just how much the previous owner didn't take care of it. And even though it looks like they kept the top part of the mower clean, they failed to keep the working part clean, which is a lot more important. And after taking the blade off for an inspection, it shows that it's in really good condition. However, there is one small spot that looks to have made contact with something pretty hard. Now it's not terrible, but out of concern, we might have to take off the starter cup on the engine so that we can inspect the flywheel key for any sort of damage. Now with the blade out of the way, I can then give the deck a good scraping before spraying it to get rid of most of the dirt that's on it. Now you don't have to do this very often, and to be honest, if you don't mow wet grass and bare spots very often, it shouldn't even get this bad. The only thing that you need to do is take a peek under the mowing deck once in a while during the mowing season to see just how bad it's getting. So if you feel as though the engine is slowing down only when cutting tall grass, then your deck might be clogged with debris like this one was. Now since it came to me with gasoline in the fuel tank, I'm going to drain out what I can and inspect it before we get down to the carb. Now if the gasoline is very old, it might be the reason why the engine wouldn't start and the best way to tell would be to look at it in a glass jar. Now this gasoline is a bit old, but not by much. If I had to guess, I'd say it's about 6 months old, but it's still usable. Now gasoline does have a shelf life and it's very short but it's still usable even past its freshness date. Just don't expect it to perform as well 6 months after getting it from the gas station but since this is only a small engine you're not losing that much performance. So after getting the starter cup off the flywheel we can now see the top of the key which is all we need to see to tell if it's damaged. But as you can see the top of the key looks exactly like a square piece of metal which is what it's supposed to look like. That means it's not damaged and the ignition timing is right where it needs to be, but if the key doesn't look like a square piece of metal, it means it's damaged and needs to be replaced. Now before I close up the top of the engine, I'm going to give it a quick spray and rinse just to get any dirt off the cooling fins. Like I said earlier, this mower is in surprisingly good condition and it won't take that much to get it looking like new again. Also, based on how clean the engine is, I don't think it was used all that much in the last 7 years since it was bought new. Which is great news for the person who's going to end up buying this mower because more than likely, I won't be keeping it. Now there's nothing wrong with this lawn mower. In fact, I really like it because it's so light and easy to use, but I have my own key features that I like my mowers to have. And this one only has one of those key features, which is self-propel. The rest has to do with what engine is on it and its overall build quality. 
So am I saying that this is a bad lawnmower then? Nope, not at all. But do I expect all my lawnmowers to last at least 20 years? Now that I cannot answer, but as you might have guessed, that is one of my requirements for a lawnmower, but is that too much to ask for? Now for a mower that was made over two decades ago, that may not be too difficult to do, but I find that some of the mowers from only the last decade may not be able to do it. Mainly because of the overuse of cheap plastics to help offset production cost, these simply won't last 20 years. Now could it last? Yes it could, but you have to go to great lengths to make sure. Now before we start to tear into the carburetor, I'm going to give it about an hour or so for the majority of the water to evaporate. And as you can see, after all the water is gone, the mower now looks a lot better. I won't say that it looks brand new, but at least it looks shiny and clean. Now just as a reminder, do not leave the degreaser on the paint for too long, otherwise you'll strip off all the shine to it. Next we'll reinstall the starter cup, but do not replace the recoil just yet because we'll need to take the fuel tank off the engine. After that we'll then take off the air filter base, and don't forget to disconnect the emissions hose from its port on the back. The reason I bring it up is that most never realized that it was even connected to it. Then when they try to reinstall the base, they forget to reconnect it, causing unfiltered air to make it inside the engine. Now if you really wanted to, you could try and only take the carb off, but because of how short the fuel line is, it's really tough to do. Instead, believe it or not, it's a lot easier to take the fuel tank off with the carb. You're welcome to try a different way, but I recommend doing it this way. Now once the fuel tank is free of the engine, we can then pull the carb off and then work it off the governor linkage. Then we can take the fuel bowl off the carb and capture what was left in it and see if there might have been some water inside the bowl, otherwise it'll just be a main jet issue. Now I don't see anything at the bottom of the bowl, so instead I'm going to pour the contents into a different color bowl. But even after doing that, I don't see anything in the gasoline like water that would keep the engine from starting. That only leaves us with the main jet being either completely clogged or at least mostly clogged as the reason why it won't start. Now after freeing the plastic cartridge from the main body of the carb, we can get a really good look at the main jet. So here's the interesting part. As you can see, it's not blocked, so it should work, right? Well maybe, but the engine may not be getting enough fuel to start either. Now to find out, I'm going to use a cleaning wire to try and see if I can clear the jet anymore. I know it's tough to tell, so I'll put the images side by side to show you just how much the opening was closed up. Now I don't have any measurements to share with you, but if I had to guess, I'd say the opening had closed up by at least half which would seem like more than enough to keep the engine from starting. I'm also going to take apart the cartridge and make sure that all the openings in it are clear as well. Now this sort of buildup could take as little as a handful of months to happen, which means this mower could have been running the last season, but because it left fuel in it, this is the result. Also, using ethanol gasoline wouldn't help either, so unfortunately this mower's story is pretty much what I see every spring when consumers try to get their mowers out to use for the first time. Oh, and if you're curious, the bowl will only fit one way, and if you try to put it the wrong way, it won't sit properly, so do not force it. Now, I did make a mistake, and that was when I was connecting the linkage for the governor that I realized that the O-ring and its retainer were still on the intake pipe. Now, these need to be taken off the intake pipe and put back on the back side of the car before them to seal properly. If not, there's a really good chance that the engine will either not start at all, or it'll start, but it won't run very well. Now just as expected, since we took the carb off with the fuel tank, we're going to need to install the tank connected to it as well. Now it's just easier this way for me, but you can always find a way that you find more comfortable for yourself. Now since we messed with the carb, we'll need to check and make sure that it's not going to leak some fuel once we put some into the tank. For this test, you'll only need to put a couple of ounces into the fuel tank and don't forget to put the gas cap back on. Now this could take as little as a couple of seconds or it might take a couple of minutes to happen. So I'd recommend that you just walk away for a couple of minutes and then come back, otherwise you'll get anxious and just say it's good when it may not be. So it's been at least 3 minutes and I don't see anything coming out of the carb and landing on the mowing deck, which is great news. That means we can now finish putting back the rest of the mower and get ready to finally start it up. Now this would have been a great time to also have that blade sharpen as well. Now if you're not comfortable doing that, then take it somewhere else to have it done. Now I'm not going to check the valve lash until I know how this engine starts up when it's cold or hot. The reason why is because if I don't need to, I'd rather not disturb the valve cover gasket which, depending upon what type of material it's made of, could start to leak later on. I know that sounds like a rather lame answer, but you have to understand that these gaskets are very cheaply made and reusing them sometimes damages them. Now these wheels are pretty easy to spin over, however I do plan on cleaning and lubricating the axles later on only when I know this mower is going to work like it should. Otherwise if I do it now and come to find out later on this mower is not going to go anywhere, I've wasted my time and just a little bit of my money on it.
So even with a very weak pull on the rope, the engine started and ran just like it's supposed to. Now the engine's been running for about 5 minutes, so it should be good and hot. Let's see if it'll start back up without any issues. Well, it started just as easily when it's hot as when it's cold, which is great news. What this means is that the valve lash is more than likely in tolerance, otherwise the engine would be tough to start whether it's hot or cold. Now I could still check on the valve lash and see just how much in tolerance it really is, but I think I'd risk a dangerous slow oil leak that the new owners shouldn't have to worry about. So how did this investment turn out? Well, I don't think I'll have to replace the air filter, a good cleaning and oiling should do the trick. Now I did eventually sharpen the blade and cleaned and lubed the wheels, which means no real parts were replaced on this one, just how I like them. So besides a few consumables like oil, cleaner, and lube, the investment in parts was zero. That means everything besides the tiny cost to buy it is all profit. So my question is, how often do you believe the seller when they tell you that it starts and runs, or are you like me? I'll believe it when I see it. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.